end of the day, it's all about our clients and we want to take care of the client. That's our focus. That's our priority. Mm -hmm. It just, how do we get there and how do we get there together? Business of Architecture, episode 375. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And this week I'm speaking to Christina Kaz and Lilith Devejian, founders and principal designers of Luxie Space, an interior design firm based in California with studios in both Fresno and Beverly Hills. Now, Christina and Lilith have a fabulous story and a very inspiring relationship and partnership. Both are Armenian, both are incredibly stylish, and both are often mistaken as each other's sisters. Now, the two actually met whilst working at another firm and very quickly found a kindred spirit in each other and they knew that their own practice was not far away. So they ended up setting up Luxie Space. And in this interview, we discuss how that process happened, how they work effectively, and how they develop relationships with high net worth individuals, and how they assess whether a client is the wrong or the right fit. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Christina Kaz and Lilit Devejian. Today's episode is sponsored by Sweet Process. Are you frustrated with how long it takes to get stuff done in your architecture firm? Or with how chaotic or confusing things seem to get? Well, then let me tell you about a much better way of getting work done. And let me tell you about an amazing tool that will help you overcome the frustrating log jams in your architecture firm. Sweet Process is a simple but powerful tool that lets you create clear step-by-step -step instructions for every task in your architecture firm, from onboarding new clients to training employees to responding to client requests. So everything gets done more easily and more reliably. Plus, you'll have a central place where everyone who works with you, your employees, contractors, and even virtual assistants can access your procedures anytime from any device. The best way to understand how Sweet Process streamlines your work is to start using it. The company offers a 14-day free trial, but as a loyal listener of this podcast, you can try for 28 days free of charge. You don't even have to enter a credit card to get started. Just navigate to www.sweetprocess.com forward slash BOA to start your free 28-day trial today. Lilith, Christina, welcome to the Business of Architecture. How are you both? Wonderful. Do, doing great. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very excited to be speaking to you. You're both the founders and principals of Luxie Space, and uh, you guys are based out in the, on the West Coast. And I'm really curious, actually, just to, to hear the story of how did you guys begin <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> we actually uh, were employed in the same uh, uh, with employment. Uh, we worked, yeah, previous employment. We worked together, and as soon as we met, we just had an instant connection. Mm -hmm. We seemed to be on the same page. We were pretty much finishing each other's sentences, and within uh, moments, but we had just an instant connection. Uh, it was almost like uh, Lily was, uh, uh, <laughs> she was from a, sister my mom. sister from another mother. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, so, so we, we got it, got it. So almost instantaneously, you guys kind of had the spark and were like, okay, great. This, this is, this is my kind of lady. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and how did the business actually begin? What, what, cause you guys have got quite an extraordinary portfolio of, you know, just the most wonderful houses. Um, how did you go from working for somebody else into your, your own business? What was the impetus behind that? Actually, that's a great question, Ryan. Um, recently, I don't remember who asked us the same question and we thought about it. And we could not remember the exact moment where we decided to establish Luxie Space. And we didn't even remember who asked whom to start Luxie Space. So it happened so organically. Before we knew, we, were, uh, we applied for our license mm -hmm. and we were working on our building and just getting our space set up, getting our team together. It seemed very, very organic. It happened instantaneously. But from the beginning, as soon as we met, we knew that it was just the beginning of a long 
friendship and a long relationship. Mm. It was almost like we were uh, business soulmates from the beginning. It, it was quite special um, and un- unusual. It was like you know somebody for a long time. Like you just met, but you feel like you know them for years. So. Right. Got it. And mm-hmm. what were the first projects that you guys worked on together? And how did you win them? So um, in the beginning, it was completely by referrals only. Right. So we never advertised. We never uh, seeked any projects. Um, we didn't even get a chance to knock on any doors. Uh, in the beginning, it was 100% by referrals. And it was a larger project. Most of the projects were custom homes, private residential uh, projects. And each one was... Um, three, four, five, 10, 12,000 square feet uh, project. So um, it takes quite a bit of energy, time, and team to put that together. Mm. So um, soon enough, I think there was a, a award-winning project that we had, and it um, I put us on the map, in a sense, and people started inquiring about our website and our social media, and we're like, oh, we don't actually have either one of those. So I remember talking about, uh, you know, with our IT guy, how to establish our uh, website mm-hmm. and we created a social media page and uh, Instagram and I just um, got things going. It's still primarily organically growing. So we're not doing any heavy advertising. Um, a lot of our clients have multiple residential, you know, uh, projects mm-hmm. at any given time. So they have right. secondary home, vacation home, their kids, family. So it's kind of organically growing. Um, but we are growing a little bit um, from the sense of we have interviews and some more presence. So we're getting inquiries throughout our website or social media these days. How, how did you begin to establish your network? to kind of to enter into the market that you're you're currently in? That's a good question. Um, we had some, uh, some valuable, uh, we had some people who were behind us, just cheered, our cheerleaders and they were being our ambassadors. And um, they, they knew that what we were offering was honest and uh, just had good intentions. Mm. Uh, for Christina and I, we're very client-focused, so um, just making sure that we do good, transparent, honest business, that that comes before anything else. Right. So it was really easy, I think, to refer Lexi Space mm-hmm. because once you give us somebody's number, you know that we're going to follow up and we're going to take care of them. And you know a big portion of referral, once uh, you, you know, you're referring someone, that's the number one thing. Are you going to take care of this person? Mm-hmm. Um, so we reached out and we had a one-on-one, very intimate, uh, cozy conversations. Um, it wasn't a marketing campaign. It was more like, let's connect and chat and see if there is any uh, opportunities. And um, it just happened organically, mm-hmm. very organically. And is that there, yeah, is there anything that you guys, because this is, it, again, it's really interesting to sort of understand what are the things that you do, and you might not be aware of them that you do them, but uh, or is there anything that you do that's out of the ordinary that kind of encourages referrals? What's the secret? What's the secret to getting great referrals? I think it's doing amazing work. I think that we do really good work. We do care. I think that is one thing that these days is rare because uh, especially when times are uncertain, a lot of Mm. times, uh, you know, budgets become important, money becomes important. So for us, taking care of client comes before anything. And it might not be a really smart business approach, to be honest. Uh, we We don't have business background. We have design and construction background. So for us, um, just making sure that uh, any uh, decision or anything we do, we are taking care of clients. And as soon as clients realize that, it's just a completely different relationship and it's just such smooth sailing. Mm. So before that, there's a little bit of friction, like, ah, do I trust you? I need to ask some questions or 
present me options. After you reach that moment of, okay, now I trust you, then it becomes really organic, smooth. You gain a momentum, mm -hmm. uh, things move faster, and you realize that your client is reaching out to you on all kinds of questions. It's not just design related. It could be lifestyle related and other questions that before they wouldn't really ask you. That's really interesting. So you're actually becoming like quite trusted advisors. And exactly. <laughs> Counselors. <laughs> love it. I love it. And, and I understand you guys have got a, a couple of locations in California. Is that right? You've got a studio in Beverly Hills and one in Fresno. Correct. We have our main office is located in Central Valley, and then we uh, have quite a few clients in uh, down south. Uh, so we would, there was a need to have a studio there for our satellite projects, for our satellite meetings. Mm -hmm. So we're there quite a bit. So um, we um, in Fresno, uh, particularly, we have warehouse and um, the, our inventory is in Fresno. So there's a lot of um, um, land. land and there's a lot of space <laughs> so most of our uh, inventory is here yet a lot of our meetings are in down south or okay. north or north yeah. yes we have a project that we just completed in Mellow park uh, so we travel quite a bit <laughs> got it and and how do you two distinguish your roles from one another is one is one kind of head of design and the other one head of business development or is it not as clear-cut as that I think we're both involved in all aspects of uh, the design, mm -hmm. uh, but we do bring uh, uh, different perspectives, mm -hmm. uh, which is a value to our clients because you have two designers who are involved and taking care of you on your projects. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, uh, I, I feel like in everything, we're very involved, we're very hands-on. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say one of us is, uh, we do have different strengths that we bring, mm -hmm but um, we're both involved in everything together. We, we are, uh, we complement each other, Ryan. So um, there are uh, moments where I rely on Christina's um, strengths, but I can't say that there is a clean cut uh, division right. of responsibilities. Um, I have to say it's uh, super special. I know it's unique. I don't know if a lot of businesses operate like this, but um, there is a nice, uh, there are moments where I just um, let Christina uh, lead and then Christina lets me lead at times. Uh, if I feel like there is a good opportunity to connect with a client or subcontractor or our team at that moment, I take the lead mm -hmm. and the same Christina. So I think it happens so naturally. I don't think we, we don't even look at it. like you take, care of this or I take care of this it just kind of naturally we're both on hands-on we take care of whatever mm -hmm. needs to happen end of the day it's all about our clients and we want to take care of the client that's our focus that's our priority mm -hmm. so I don't it just how do we get there and how do we get there together got it um so in terms of like when when one of you brings in a particular project do you have like this one is mine and this one is yours or it doesn't work like that at all no it does not at all uh if uh, we bring in a project and i feel like there's a moment where christina's uh, skill sets are way more suited and mm -hmm. client will benefit from that better then there's no discussion even like christina knows it and she'll right. just jump on that and if there is a moment where I think that I will connect and do a better job or I, I would be able to uh, expedite the process mm -hmm. or help client get there faster, then I'm going to jump on that. And I know that there's no hurt feelings because we, um, it's interesting, uh, someone asked us, um, how do you deal with egos or how do you uh, manage that aspect of, you know, partnership? So... Um, if you asked me 10 years ago, um, can you see yourself with a partner in the business um, doing this? I would say absolutely no. Um, I never, I thought I would always be in design, but I never thought I would be in design with a partner. Right. Uh, so when I met Christina, I realized that it's not just a regular friendship. 
it is truly a long-term harmonious type of relationship. It's very special. Mm. And at any given time, if there's any uncertainty, I know that it's coming from a place of, I don't know the whole scenario. I know she takes care of me unconditionally. She loves me and uh, I know her heart. So I, at any given time, if there is a little bit of, you know, I'm not sure what this is. It always, I give her, you know, that she's, I'm coming from that place that she's always taking care of me. She loves our business. She loves our team. So ego has no place here. And if there is a discrepancy, we actually try to figure out what's the best solution for the client mm -hmm. and res resolve that issue uh, instantly right there, right then. And there's no hurt feelings. Got it. So conflict is rare. Right. <laughs> Very rare. It's and almost non-existent, right? No. <laughs> how, how, so how, how is the rest of the team structured? Or how do you work with others? Sure. Yeah. Um, we have a okay. good group of people uh, that are helping us. We have, um, we have uh, um, a team of, uh, that takes care of the installation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an extended team that takes care of larger installations. Sometimes we do like eight properties at once. Mm -hmm. So right. for those instances, you'll need 14, 15, 20 people um, you know, for one install. So you need to get in and out. It depends on a project. If we have two weeks to do something, that's a different team that we rely on. And then we have a really intimate team that helps us on uh, our social media, helps us on everyday coordinations. Our, uh, we have a design librarian who helps us with um, uh, keeping everything up to date, making sure that um, our tools are sharp and ready to go. Um, so we do rely on our team quite a bit. Uh, you can't do it by yourself. Uh, yeah. It's a team effort indeed. How, cool. Yes. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you guys, because again, you know, it's really, it's really interesting. I, I speak to a lot of interior designers and I'm always interested in the relationship between interior designers and architects and also the other parts uh -huh. of the construction industry. Um, I know that you've, you've both got experience. You've both come up from a background mm -hmm. in construction. Um, how has that background informed how you work with your other consultants? That's actually a great question. Uh, well, as you know, in construction, uh, mistakes can be very costly. Mm -hmm. And we both have a uh, building back. We come from a building background. We work for our builders and in construction for many years. And with that, we bring a huge uh, uh, advantage mm -hmm. uh, to our buyers. Um, so we're able to give different perspectives and uh, this is, and this brings, we're, we're able to give different perspectives and it gives them great value uh, for everybody involved from the architecture mm -hmm. to the contractor. And uh, it actually, uh, uh, it, our clients appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it allows us to be uh, efficient Mm -hmm. uh, when we are uh, designing, uh, we're able to, um, um, it's like um, a lot of times in construction, you're, um, the way that you imagine design, especially in the beginning and the way that actually the design happens at the job site, they're two completely different things. Yeah. Um, any designer mm -hmm. can come up with beautiful designs. A lot of people are super talented, but to come up with designs that are actually executable mm -hmm. and uh, at the job site, they can actually happen in a timely fashion within the budget, mm -hmm. that is a different skill set. So um, I feel like with our construction background, mm -hmm. we're able to almost value engineer a lot of our conceptual designs so that they're actual design suggestions that are attainable. Yeah, and the construction crew doesn't have to figure out how to mm -hmm. do it. We're almost helping them, telling them how to engineer it so that they are able to stay within the uh, schedule and within the budget. Because those two things are the most important things in construction, within the budget and the timeline. Yeah, on schedule. Yeah. And, so, and, and, and do you guys often, are you often the project leads and are you assembling the team essentially, or do you end up being brought in to, you know, to be interior design leads halfway through the project? How does it typically work? 
start in the beginning. I want to say we're always yeah. involved in the beginning. Right. However, I think both happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we've, we've been brought in through architects and uh, contractors um, uh, and clients, and sometimes we're brought we're involved before even uh, the parcel is purchased. Right. So before okay. the land, even the client is looking for land, but they're already starting their floor plans, uh, the drawings and conceptual design and all of that. So uh, it, it, it's a different process for everyone. I feel like with each uh, client, it's a different process. Mm-hmm. And so far, interestingly enough, every project is a little bit different. And the way that it evolves mm. from the conceptual design to construction drawings to uh, selecting your contractor and then executing the whole thing um, is a little bit different. So it's do you a little have bit a, of both. Do you have a preference to, to how, the, how the team should be structured or a preference of your position within the team? I think I'm going to say it probably depends on the project mm-hmm. again. Um, some projects, it's really nice to be involved with in the very beginning mm-hmm. um, just because we do have a discovery session. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah. We do have a discovery session. And how do we do that? We're so client focused that we have uh, quizzes uh, to get an understanding of our client's lifestyle, where they're going, where they're coming from, uh, to mm-hmm. be able to create a design an environment that will enhance their lifestyle Mm -hmm. and they can live a better life. Um, This gives us a little bit of a a understanding and we're able to um, uh, process all of their, um, uh, from the multiple sessions that we have with them, we're able to get a good understanding of their true preferences uh, and then take that and actually develop all the design around that. This allows us to tailor Mm -hmm. their designs to their lifestyle. So for example, um, the the young entrepreneur. So we have a client Mm -hmm. uh, who's a young lady entrepreneur and she lives a very uh, busy lifestyle. And when we're designing her kitchen, she loved uh, drinking coffee in the morning and enjoying her coffee So we took that into consideration and we had to locate her coffee bar in an ideal location Mm -hmm. to make it convenient and so she can enjoy it. So as she walked in in the mornings, grabbing her cup of coffee, her property actually was on a lake view. So we have a nice lounge area that we designed around it. So she would grab her coffee, go sit at her uh, nice lounge chair and look at the views and take her first sip of coffee. So just taking that into consideration, knowing that she appreciated that Mm -hmm. and be able to incorporate that into the design. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, like knowing that she's uh, really enjoying it makes us feel good. Yeah, it's, and I mean, there are coffee machines in a lot of designs. It's not nothing new that we incorporated. But I think during our discovery session, we realized that coffee is more than coffee for her. Mm -hmm. Um, She doesn't use her appliances. I literally like I was like, okay, I can relate to that. I'm not a big chef myself, but um, she uh, we ended up creating a beautiful kitchen for her. Um, beautiful appliances, everything up to par. You would never guess that she does not cook. Mm. However, um, we actually created a circulation pattern for her to uh, analyze if she's walking through dining room to her coffee bar, how, what, how is that going to look like and what that experience will look like. If she's coming from her bedroom, how would that look like? And then we created like the most comfortable and cozy welcoming chairs right adjacent to it, almost like a lounge viewing the lake view and with a cup of coffee with your iPad or your uh, book. Um, It just created the most important focal point of her kitchen. Um, So little things sometimes mean so much more to every client. um, there, there was another client that was absolutely um, amazing on social media. She was a genius. That was her business. She was working from home. So when we discovered that through our discovery sessions, um, we decided that we were going to incorporate Instagram or social media ready moments throughout her entire house. So there were moments where it's almost like vignettes where she can easily do like, 
product placement or take a quick video or a photo. And it Love just it. would help her, yeah, make it convenient. And um, uh, she absolutely loved it. And it means, it, it, it means so much more than I, I can describe it to you. It's <laughs> not just the design. It's actually creating something that, you know, this particular client is going to appreciate. They value that mm -hmm. and they can enjoy that. And knowing that it just, it's a nice feeling. Amplifies nice, their yeah. lifestyle. I, I speak to a lot of architects and designers who are often wanting to serve the kind of clientele that you have, right? So the kind of mm -hmm. high net worth clientele in, in the sort of, let's call them the glamorous locations. And, you know, there's <laughs> beautiful parts of California and Beverly Hills and the likes. Um, and there is a, there is a different, mindset in many ways on how to serve clients of this mm -hmm. caliber what would you say that entails like what like and you've, you've kind of given a little bit of an, uh, an explanation there in terms of like the listening process that you go through to be able mm -hmm. to incorporate lifestyle details into what they're doing mm -hmm. but in terms of the actual business service that you give somebody what would you say are the, are the things that that make a very powerful client relationship in terms of communications and, you know, the, the, almost like the hospitality aspect of your business mm -hmm. service to them. Customer service. I, uh, Absolutely. I think um, being truly mm -hmm. client focused, mm -hmm. um, we, um, again, I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a very uh, viable advice to other architects or designers but uh, for us um, uh, client focusness is we're almost mm -hmm. excessive on that so mm -hmm. sometimes if you analyze our business decisions it might not quite make a great sense but we're doing really well we love what we do our we're, we're successful but when it comes to the business aspect of it, I think we are quite heavy on uh, making sure that the client is taken care of in every single opportunity we get. We consider those opportunities. If there is a moment that we can shine through taking care of our clients to a level that is not really very present these days. Nowadays, mm -hmm. everyone talks about it, mm -hmm. but I can't say that everyone's very client focused. Yeah. That, uh, that comes up left and right, but it almost, I did not want to mention that uh, just because it's overused and underutilized. Do, 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 you, have uh, an do you have an example? Sure. So uh, sometimes, uh, for example, we don't do a lot of outdoor living uh, design. Right. Uh, we do uh, when it comes to lifestyle and furniture, but we don't necessarily do it for landscaping and designing their outdoor flooring and the you know landscaping and all of that. We had a client that after we finished the entire house of new construction, um, our client said that uh, they would like to uh, consider us for their landscape design. So we referred a landscape architect to the project. The client felt more comfortable if we could be involved in the design, design. Mm -hmm. of it. Right. So even though I have to say with our team and our uh, you know, structure, that wasn't something that organically we would prefer to do it. We could do it. And a lot of design teams could do it. But we end up spending much more time and effort and investing that in our client relations. Uh, just to be able to uh, make sure that they walk away feeling that we the brought day, more than we are. I think we're so focused on taking care of our client. We go out of our way to mm -hmm. take care of them any which way possible. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have such a long relationship. Obviously, when they're building, it takes you know a couple of years sometimes. Mm -hmm. You get to really know them. And on a different level too. And they open up to you, they're comfortable. So they know uh, you are there to take care of them. So every decision that they're uh, out there making, even if it's not like design related per se, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, so what do you think? What should I do? You know, what would be your suggestion? I mean, we've had clients that we've actually selected exterior paint color for them. We're like, okay, here's your, it's a huge home. 
the exterior paint. Here's some <laughs> options. We've got some selections for you. Come check it out. Oh no, it's okay. Which one is the best one? You guys go ahead and select it and go for it. I'm like, oh, why don't you come and check it out? You know, just it's kind of, decision. yeah, it's a big decision. But they were so comfortable that they're like, just go ahead and make the decision. I know you're going to make the best decision because you are taking care of me. I already know that. Yeah. So that's, that's just a, a, a relationship, I think, we build uh, that the client. We nurture yeah. that relationship from day one. And I think we're really, um, uh, we're really good with communication. So right. um, we end up over communicating most of the time. So in construction, surprises happen every mm -hmm. single time. So making sure that you send those quick emails and saying that, dear client, uh, I told you that I would get back to you today, but I have absolutely nothing to report. But I am not forgetting you. We're working on it. Uh, please stay tuned. It seems like maybe within the next day or two, I'll have more to say and I'll reach out. And unfortunately, sometimes you have to reach out and say that more than once. Um, because a uh, subcontractor is out for whatever reason and you, you cannot obtain. We rely on other uh, mm -hmm. people on gaining our uh, information. Mm -hmm. We send requests for proposals and sometimes those proposals don't come uh, quick enough. So right. just over communicating, connecting, staying on the same, mm -hmm. just making sure that they, they know we're not forgetting them mm -hmm. and always being on time with um, anything that uh, we do. So I think that's super important. No one is waiting on Lexi space. Lexi space is waiting for everyone else. Got it, <laughs> got it. How, how do you know when it's not going to be a good fit with a client? Do you ever have that? Does it ever happen where you're like, nope, this person, mm-mm. Mm -mm. I think that's in the beginning when we uh, get introduced and that is really important to us. Uh, that we meet mm -hmm. and see who they are. They see who we are to see if it's a good fit because mm -hmm. you're going to have a long relationship. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that a uh, relationship is going to be uh, enjoyable mm -hmm. uh, for both parties involved because end of the day, if you have a good connection, you're going to be able to uh, provide a better design and uh, give them a better service. It's, it's a win-win situation. Yeah, it's quite instant. And we rely on our intuition on that, mm -hmm. uh, right? It's not, we don't have a formula or we right. don't do any kind of assessment. We just meet for uh, an hour or two and then we end up, um, we're on the same page most of the time. So mm -hmm. sometimes when, let's say Christina picks up on something that I don't, I'll ask why you think so. And she'll kind of show me, uh, you know, her perspective. And um, most of the time, we haven't had a case mm -hmm. where, I felt strongly about not taking a client and Christina really wanted to take the client. Um, we're usually pretty synced on that. Mm -hmm. We have, we're actually very selective with mm -hmm. our clientele. Uh, one bad client client is too many, uh, too much. We just, it's not worth it. Uh, especially for a boutique design uh, firm, yeah. it's not worth having one bad. The bottom line is when we take a client, we need to see that potential of uh, doing a really good job and making that client happy. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're not going to get there, um, just respectfully decline. I think uh, it's not worth, um, no financial gain uh, can justify that kind of a headache. I think that's really important as well to to stress that. I mean, we often say, you know, similar sort of thing with, with in architecture, that mm -hmm. those bad clients or the ones where it's just not the right fit can be uh -huh. very, very expensive for both parties. Mm -hmm. well, and it is, it's an, it's an intimate relationship and it's a long-term relationship as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. if you're only meeting somebody for a few times and uh -huh. it's not the right fit and you might not be able to uncover what, uh -huh. you know, what is, what this person is actually going to be like, or are they going to be able to listen mm -hmm. to what we suggest? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that there is always that gamble, if you like. So being able mm -hmm. to no upfront is is very important L likewise in terms of your consultants and say for example mm -hmm. if you're working with an architect team um how do you you know and, and this can be sometimes you know the, the relationship between interior designers and architects can be amazing and you know both mm -hmm. can kind of um you know work really well collaboratively but there are also laps where one service overlaps with the other service 
with the other person's discipline as well. What makes a good relationship between you and an architects when you do work with them? I think understanding that both the architect and us, if we are on the same page, mm-hmm. that we know we're going to take care of the client. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. our priority. That's our focus. Mm-hmm. It's not about us or the architect. Mm-hmm. It's about developing a design for the client. Mm-hmm. So if we both can see that, then you're going to have mm-hmm. a successful relationship. I, I agree. So, I think uh, making sure that all the client is, uh, we're all here to serve the client mm-hmm. yeah. and making sure that we're not doing this to for our glory or for any kind of any other game than just being a team member mm-hmm. and finding the best solution for the client. I think every time we ask that question, uh, we, you know, everyone starts feeling good about it because then you, I'm not saying, oh, I'm smarter or I know it better. It, it's nothing about that. It's all about what would make, which decision will complement this project the best. Mm-hmm. I think that to us, that's the number one, definitely. Got it. Um, I'm very interested in how you guys publish your work. How do you, how do you interact with the media? for example, in in terms of magazines and PR and and press, do you guys work with an external PR consultant or is it very much worked in house? A little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a, we have a team that takes care of our social media uh, presence and we do uh, have a PR campaign that helps us with publishing and everything else. Um, It's a nice balance. Just, you need both. Mm-hmm. Um, you and need a team to be able to uh, mm-hmm. propel you. Mm-hmm. So, there is yeah. only so much you mm-hmm. can do. And I can be the first one saying that I know I don't, I'm not great at social media and I don't understand marketing quite as well. I do understand when it comes to designing aspect of it and, you know, uh, interiors. And, uh, but I, as far as marketing, it's not, I'm not an expert, so I have to let the experts do what they do best. <laughs> got it, got it. And and how have you sort of developed those strategies with with sort of marketing consultants? Do, do you do you have a list of say, look, we want to get published in these sorts of magazines? Do you, are you aware of it first? Of like, actually, you know what? It'd be really good to be published in this magazine with this particular project. Or how do those conversations work? I think it's not really selecting. Uh, a lot of times you don't even get to select those magazines just simply because the type of work that you do a lot mm-hmm. of times is not necessarily suited for, for the magazine that you love. So you, it, it, it will get published in a magazine that it's most fitting and right. uh, given their calendar, what uh-huh. they have planned. So yeah, sometimes they already have pre-planned and months in advance, mm-hmm. certain uh, design direction and style that they want to feature. And what you're working on is uh, obviously with the private clients, mm-hmm. really specific. So the uh, chances of that fitting in gets a little bit, uh, it's a little bit higher. Yeah, so, so we do, uh, we would communicate our preferences, but uh, you know, a lot of times it's almost irrelevant because mm-hmm. you, your, your work uh, will you know will be published in the best suited magazines mm-hmm. or online um so that whatever is best fit did you, did you ever have um issues with privacy or clients not wanting to have their work printed or photographed <laughs> that's a really good question ryan um so initially when we started can i take that one yeah. <laughs> So initially when we started, we were completely, no one knew us unless if you, uh, if you were a friend or you worked with one of our clients or you were a friend of our clients, uh, no one knew us. Mm. We were very private. We had a design studio uh, in downtown, very hidden, under the radar completely. So we started getting phone calls because uh, uh, some private elite clients like the factor that we had zero social media presence and we had no website and no one knew who, who we were. But they saw, yeah, they saw our work and they absolutely loved it yeah. and they wanted to hire us 
not only mm-hmm. because we know what we're doing, but because we're super private. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. We, uh, we have signed NDAs um, uh, several times. We work with some amazing, like world-class uh, uh, automotive uh, companies that I'm not at liberty to speak about. But um, yes, we, because uh, we offer that exclusivity mm-hmm. and yeah. um, we don't necessarily, most of our work doesn't really get posted uh, online. Um, it's, uh, it, it's different. I know we, it wasn't intentional. It was 100% accidental. Happened organically. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's re- that's really interesting, and and often mm-hmm. you know with that kind of client as well that in the the market sector, obviously a, mm-hmm. a big concern and you know mm-hmm. always like privacy and secrecy, and mm-hmm. also being able to and also like uh, uh, have the client feel like they're part of something exclusive, mm-hmm. as well is is also Absolutely. very important. How do you how do you maintain having the client feel like they've got an exclusive service whilst trying to grow at the same time it is a cash 22 yeah. it it's is. uh it, it's tricky like the uh, twelve thousand. yeah foot we had a yeah. twelve thousand square foot project in a beautiful 40 acre property um we helped the client from ground up it um were there was actually some uh civil work that needed to be done civil engineering and uh, mapping and it took like a year of prepping for mm-hmm. just the you know uh, land and then uh, the home was um, uh, built the whole process from a to z took five years wow uh, there were three buildings on the property the lake house there's a uh, rv entertainment house and then uh, the main uh, property uh, we spent so much time and energy and i can tell you it was a true authentic design also mm-hmm. a lot of intricate millwork a lot of um some of the design elements we had to actually fly to different uh, states to learn about some of the intricate details how they would come together and bring it home um the dome alone the was dome, from yeah. i want to say maybe from uh london yes. or canada canada uh, it was right. a few years ago i don't yeah. remember but it was a massive one of the largest domes that they had done uh but it ended up looking amazing but we have no photography whatsoever we have photography do it for the uh framing uh, yeah. i have some photos of that but uh finished there's zero photography so i feel like it's almost like one of my babies and I would like to, you know, photograph and show the world how amazing uh, that project is. But at the end of the day, that was a huge value for my clients. And mm. um, they, you know, he, it was very important. He was a super successful individual and uh, he wanted to make sure that it was very private. And of course, um, it stayed private. <laughs> amazing. How, how do you manage finance and money? And obviously, you know, there's there's a number of things here. There's obviously the finances of your own business, but often in interior design, you guys are entrusted, literally, with like half a million quid or 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 mm-hmm. more of the client's mm-hmm. money, and you're actually you're actually actively looking after it. Um, is that something that you guys do? Or absolutely, of course, yeah. That's a huge part of design. I think uh, one of the aspects that we bring uh, tremendous value to the client is actually helping them. Um, whether you have millions of dollars in the bank or, uh, you know, not so much, there's one thing in design that is super important. It's knowing where to splurge Mm -hmm. and knowing where to be frugal. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think we, um, we do a really good job on that. We, we know where to spend so that you get your return and it's really appreciated and it's worth it. And then we know where it's excessive and unnecessary, uh, unless if the client feels like, you know, they fall in love sometimes with pieces that uh, it doesn't make a logical <laughs> sense, but it's totally worth it for them. So what's the value for their pleasure? So sometimes it's just a true, you know, splurging, but most of the time it's huge management of large mm-hmm. funds. You want to make sure that you spend it wisely and so that the client can get the best return. The client, they can. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and do you take the same discipline obviously into your own business, like managing internal funds and fees and. 
that's a no, that's more Christine. I can tell you, Christina is way better at that than I am. So I rely on her expertise um, a bit more <laughs> than she relies on me. <laughs> we try as much as we can. <laughs> we're I mean, we're, it is a process. We're mm -hmm. learning, definitely growing our business, and we try to be strategic where we. Uh, uh, budget our funds uh, mm -hmm. for and how to go about it throughout the year like uh, COVID happened so how do you go about it with our mm -hmm. marketing or uh, advertising how to you know proceed or uh, do we need to allocate the funds in a different way so we Creative definitely ways. yeah uh, sit down we chat about it and see what's the best way to go about it and again even though I kind of take part but it's always done yes. together like it's mm -hmm. mutual so if we're doing this, we're both on the same page. Mm -hmm. We both agree that this is the direction that we want to proceed with. Great. And it, it, that also relates back to obviously the, the initial fees that you've gotten from the clients. How do you, how do you set your fees? How do you make sure that you've, that you've got your fees right? I think most of our uh, projects are scope based. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're based on referrals yeah. a lot of times. So the client, before even they get to us, a lot of times they already know what to expect. So right. when we um, <laughs> hardly ever, we this, if we feel like there is a lot of discussions about finances or fees and things like that, mm. then most likely that's not really our client. And we, uh, we want to make sure that we mostly work with the kind of clients that we can make them happy and we yeah. can develop a successful project mm -hmm. so if there is a sense of uh you know financially there might not be a, it's not a great fit we are very quick to say you know uh, maybe we'll refer you to another design firm or you know we're not the best fit in this case so um we are we'll know right away if that's mm -hmm. a good fit or not so um if the way that we go about it is uh, like this. When you're building a 10,000 square foot home, let's say, um, a mistake can be very costly. Yeah. So if we can prevent a mistake or two happening during your construction, we have completely earned our fees. And in most construction, we will prevent a few mistakes from happening. Right. Uh, so one of the projects I remember... Uh, we walked into a space and we see the stone uh, uh, well, it was a uh, special stone from I think Italy yeah. um, and they installed half of the wall or maybe 25% uh, of it and it was the wrong stone so we immediately stopped the construction contacted the right people and uh, you know returned the remaining of the stone got the right stone that would have been like tens of thousands of dollars worth of mistake so um, even though sometimes um, you can say, oh, so-and-so's fault and, you know, someone would have absorbed that fee, whether it's the contractor or uh, the vendor or the client, um, we're just happy to be able to, being so hands-on, mm -hmm. um, we, during the construction, we will have job site visits regularly to assure that if we're specifying miter corners, those corners are miter. When we are specifying, you know, a certain millwork, um, it is coming together the way that it's designed in our drawings and schematics. So um, we're quite hands-on and it allows us to save budget, time, resources, and effort. Um, and it's worth it. Yeah, it's almost like the light world that the, the last project. Actually, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> this was interesting. So we had a, a really cool client. He was very well traveled. I think he stayed in a hotel um, overseas, Dubai maybe. It was a five-star hotel, phenomenal place. And he came home showing us uh, photos and talking about the space and saying how he absolutely loved this woodwork, mm. wood detail that he wanted to bring to his home. So we were excited. So we designed a space, an interior design scope that really incorporated some of those wonderful, I think it was mahogany or it was walnut. Um, and um, after we designed it, it was very similar to what he really wanted. Um, however, <laughs> uh, looking at the budget and looking at the schedule, we were off on both. Right. 
So it was a unique, it was an innovative type of thing. So we hadn't really done a design that was uh, so unique in that sense. So um, we had to value engineer. Coming from a construction background, Christina and I decided to change the materials that you wouldn't see and use, I think we used two by four construction mm -hmm. to uh, make some of the cabinetry made out of two by four and then wrapping it with wood panels. And instead of going with 10 to 12 uh, foot material, we uh, went with six to eight foot material or something. And we incorporated some interesting um, uh, yes. reveal lines mm -hmm. and uh, some of the seams were hiding there. So the design was rethought, it was value engineered. And I think we could have not done a really great job if we didn't have the background in construction. And when we discussed this with the uh, construction company, I remember in the beginning, they were like, oh, what are you talking about? And then when we actually showed the section cuts and elevations and all of that, they realized that we actually thought about the whole, how everything comes together, right, not just the overall look, creative but solution. Yeah, yeah, creative solution to, um, to that look. And it was done exactly the way that we wanted. Klein was thrilled. It looks, um, he got the essence he really wanted. Um, and the same way in that same project, there was a light well in the kitchen. It mm. was massive. And it was not centered with absolutely anything. It wasn't centered with the island or the second island, or it didn't make a design or architectural sense. So uh, we thought about it to remove it and replace it and repair it would have cost quite a bit and it would have uh, pushed our schedule several weeks. So we designed a special ceiling, ceiling mm -hmm. and it just overlapped it beautifully. And you would never know there was a light bulb hiding there. It was asymmetrical, but it gave us an amazing, that was a, one of our award-winning projects. It just gave us an amazing focal point. And I could say that was one of my favorite things in that entire kitchen. That is <laughs> Fantastic. <in detail. laughs> Actually, maybe we can show some of the photos. Yeah, we can show some photos. Yeah, you. no, we'd love to. We'd love, love to see some of that. That's, that's extraordinary. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm also very interested, you were saying as well earlier on about, some of your kind of newer services, if you've liked, that have emerged. So you you also have you know, kind of working with private one-to-one -one clients, mm -hmm. but you're also doing a lot of staging of properties. Could you explain a little bit, number one, what is staging? And mm -hmm. number two, how that as a business service began to evolve? Absolutely. Um, so I think it happened so organic, mm -hmm. uh, organically, that branch of ours, um, when we're working with elite clients, they typically have multiple properties and they want to, during their construction, they might be selling an, a property. Mm -hmm. So they offer, uh, they would, um, we would extend our services cause they would ask for it to stage their properties mm -hmm. for them to be able to sell it. So it just kind of that branch kind of happened organically, mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. But and I think that's really important as far as real estate goes to be able to stage those luxurious uh, properties to be able to sell at a greater value. Yeah, we all know that in the real estate, especially in the uh, luxury market, you must stage to get the most dollar value, upsell it and move the property, you know, sell it quicker. So uh, we ended up... Um, accommodating us that's another special accommodation like we were just trying to extend a service that we don't otherwise offer but we offer to our elite clientele for their private residential project and that was just an extended service um, we knew how um, real estate is a majorly emotional purchase yeah uh, everyone knows that so we wanted to make sure that um, with our staging um, we took that in consideration. So from the moment you open your doors, um, we felt like the feeling comes before you actually had a chance to assess and evaluate the space and to see if you love it or you, you know, not so much. So the feeling comes first and then your brain kicks in. 
we wanted to make sure that with our staging, we invoke the kind of feelings that we want people to experience in those specific areas of the home. Starting from the entry, mm -hmm. feeling welcome, feeling inspired, harmonious, and uh, kind of like a little glimpse of how the rest of the home would look, and then carrying it through. And maybe in the kitchen, there's like a special staging of accessories where it looks like the homeowner just stepped away for a second, they'll be right in, but it's so, a neutrally stage where you can envision yourself being in that space and living in that space from your own perspective. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, every building has their own assets. It's really important for us to emphasize those assets and um, like uh, those highlight those moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like drapery in the tall ceilings. Um, it just elevates the ceiling, low profile furniture. Do you do a lot of work with the estate agents and the and the uh, and the vendor themselves? Developers, the developers, yeah, real estate agents and homeowners. Yes. Got it. And do you do a lot of work in terms of understanding who the audience is and their kind of buying preferences? Definitely, and knowing that it needs to be neutral uh, in color tones and be able to uh, attract the uh, general uh, public. Mm -hmm. not specific because when we're designing private clients, we're specifically tailoring everything to their lifestyle. Right. But here we want to generalize, mm -hmm. but be able to cr uh, create emotional moments, a connection, like hot spots. spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they're walking through, they get connected because it's all about that emotional connection. So if they, as soon as they can connect with mm -hmm. one of the rooms, they feel like they can see themselves there, yeah. then the deal is sold. <laughs> okay, can, you, can you give us an example of the sorts of things that you might do that create those hotspots? Um, sure. Sometimes it's... Uh, first, you need to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, the basic rules are respected uh -huh. so the fundamental right. principles are met uh, the scale the proportion the neutral color palette and everything else have to be up to par but then there are little things you can do like um uh, staging in such way again that it feels like uh it someone is living in the space so it's not perfect it's actually imperfect you yeah. have a laptop on a bed uh, with open book with maybe shoes aside that are, it looks like actually someone just took their shoes off and just jumped on the bed. Like a moment where you're not sure, is this on purpose or is this a staging? So little <laughs> unexpected moments like that. <laughs> Love will, it. Yeah, will help you envision yourself. We call those emotional hotspots. Right. Uh, and we sprinkle those throughout the entire house and just um, helps the clients to, see things from their own perspective and honestly it comes from a really good place if you can see yourself living there mm -hmm. then great uh, i think the budget and everything else is secondary actually one of my <laughs> girlfriends yeah she bought her property completely <laughs> on emotional it was an emotional purchase she was walking it through with uh, a pair of couple uh, one of her friends so as she's going through the home she goes home and uh, she tells her husband, I think I found a home for us uh, to purchase. The husband's like, we're not looking for a home. It's not in our near future plans. We already have a home. She says, I saw myself living in that space. I'm waking up into, um, waking up to that backyard view. It was sitting on a golf course lot. So she fell in love with the golf course views. Shortly after they purchased the property, it was overpriced by a couple hundred thousand dollars. But, uh, you know, she was happy. He's happy. They're living a beautiful life. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> love it. Love it. Really, really interesting. Brilliant. So what's what's in store for the rest of 2021? Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting year. Yeah, definitely. Had to pivot a little bit. Mm hmm. Um, we, our plans changed a little bit due to COVID mm -hmm. still being somewhat, you know, in progress. Uh, thank God things are getting a little bit better. But um, we do, um, you know, real estate and uh, interior design market, thank God, is still doing well. Yeah. So we're quite busy. Um, we're finishing up a few exciting projects. Um, so focused on that. Um just glad that we have still those special projects because in 2020 
for a moment it got uncertain. Yeah. But I have to say our phones have been ringing more than ever. Our inquiries are coming in quite a bit. Um, so I think uh, it's uh, psychologically, I feel like we should be stressed because of COVID. But uh, in reality, um, gone much busier mm -hmm. and uh, trying to uh, maneuver and figure out which direction to take uh, um, our next next projects because we have multiple coming in. Mm -hmm. And again, figure out what is the right fit, who is the right client uh, that we can work together with mm -hmm. to be able to give a successful mm -hmm. project at the end of the day. Do, do you guys ever looking towards moving out of residential sector and moving into hospitality or, or have you done that already? <laughs> we have had a few special projects. Yeah. Um, we've had, um, I mentioned earlier, one of the projects actually in up North, uh, it was a very special project. Um, we could not say no, uh, considering the kind of, you know, uh, elite, company that it, it was an honor to work with that company yeah. so uh, we do accommodate occasionally uh, it needs to be again a really good fit we won't right. take just any we've done several uh, commercial projects but they're not just any projects there is a good reason why we took the projects um, and because we felt like it was aligned with our overall um, principles mm -hmm. and the overall design uh, 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 perspectives. So uh, we'll take a few special projects, but I think it's tricky because uh, you need to make sure that your schedule is continuous mm -hmm. and you don't take more than you can handle mm -hmm. because especially in the luxury market, you need to make sure that your client feels like they're the only client you have. Um, that's non-negotiable. That's super important. Um, you need to be able to answer those phone calls. We're very um, close with our clients. They actually get our cell phone numbers. So uh, the team takes care of the whole project, but Christina and I do a lot of the client management ourselves. Got it. Fantastic. Christina, Lilith, thank you so much for your time today. That's the perfect place for us to conclude the conversation. It's really, really insightful um, and hearing about how you guys serve your clients, how you've been winning work and how you've been growing Luxie's space. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.